Civil asset forfeiture is theft. Or maybe you could call it legalized government robbery. Well, whatever you want to call it, it's bad. Okay, so nullification news report number one. Unlike criminal asset forfeiture, civil asset forfeiture does not require a guilty verdict before government permanently seizes property. In some states, and with the feds, it doesn't even require the owner to face criminal charges of any kind. In this process, the property itself is charged with a crime and is the subject of the legal proceeding. Property owners must then prove that the property wasn't involved in criminal activity in order to get it back. This flips due process on its head, forcing the owner to establish the property's innocence, and it shifts the burden of proof from the state to the individual. It's basically legalized government robbery. But there's another layer to this problem. Even when the states end civil asset forfeiture, there's a federal program called equitable sharing, and law enforcement uses this program to do an end run around state-level restrictions. It works like this. State and local police work the case and then claim it involves federal law or crosses into federal jurisdiction. Through a process known as adoption, the federal government prosecutes the federal case under federal law and splits the proceeds with the local police, which provides most of the manpower. Through this program, state and local law enforcement agencies receive up to 80% of the take. In recent years, a growing number of states have addressed both programs, ending civil asset forfeiture on the state level and opting out of the federal equitable sharing program in most situations. And for 2023, we're tracking at least five states looking to address both programs. In Mississippi, it's House Bill 622. In West Virginia, it's House Bill 2072. In New York, it's Assembly Bill 641. In South Carolina, it's Senate Bill 48. And in New Hampshire, it's House Bill 593. We're also watching bills in both Oklahoma and Texas that address only the state-level civil asset forfeiture program, but the Institute for Justice rates both states as absolutely terrible, so we'll take even a small win there. Next up, nullification news report number two. If you're like me, you've heard plenty about how inflation is supposedly slowing down and the economy is going to start getting better, but at best, this is a crock. Over at Shift Gold, Mike Meharry reports that investment guru Jim Grant argues that we have not seen the last of this inflationary outburst because inflation has become deeply rooted in the global financial system. Grant put it this way. He said the rate of change is everyone's preoccupation, but the loss in purchasing power is never recovered. This is the nature of the fiat currency regime. A couple weeks ago here at NMN, we reported on Missouri Senate Bill 100, which goes head to head with this fiat currency regime. It does three big things. It makes gold and silver legal tender in the state. It eliminates capital gains taxes on gold and silver. And it establishes a bullion depository. And now a few more states are considering legislation to address one or more of these three essential steps. There's Alaska, House Bill 3, South Carolina, House Bill 3080, and West Virginia, House Bill 2333. Each would make gold and silver legal tender in the state as it always should have been. With passage, these states could join Utah, Oklahoma, and Wyoming. In Tennessee, Senate Bill 150 would establish a bullion depository like the one in Texas or a privately owned one like Alpine Gold in Utah. Back to Jim Grant. Meharry reports that Grant said the primary driver in the economy right now is the consequences of the monetary regime in place worldwide. And what a surprise. This is the same warning we got from Thomas Jefferson during the Depression of 1815 through 1821. He said the evils of this deluge of paper money 
are not to be removed until our citizens are generally and radically instructed in their cause and consequences. Nothing helps us reach and teach more people about the cause and consequence and so much more, more than the financial faith and support of our members. Over at 10th Amendment Center com slash members, you can join us for as little as two bucks a month. We also have annual five year and lifetime options, and you can help us take a stand for the Constitution and liberty, whether the government likes it or not. So a big thanks goes out to you through the TAC membership program for sponsoring this episode of Nullification Movement News. Hey, welcome back to the show. And last up for today is Nullification News Report number three. And it's more of a warning than a hard news report, but it's important stuff. Today in history, January 20th, 1732, founding father Richard Henry Lee was born. And one of his best quotes ever comes from a 1791 letter to his nephew, Thomas Shippen. He wrote that politics is the science of fraud and politicians are the professors of that science. And we see that kind of follow the science all the time today. As more and more people get on board with the nullification movement, we're also seeing more and more politicians file legislation that pretends to be awesome, but does little more than protect the status quo. One example is the Second Amendment Preservation Act. While there are a few states considering good legislation, things have also gone in the wrong direction. They've gotten so bad in some situations that we've actually had to dedicate an entire section of our annual State of the Nullification Movement report explaining what these people are claiming to do, but definitely not doing. And that's the warning. Just because some legislator files a bill that sounds good on the surface, a lot of times it's just grandstanding and does nothing to protect the Constitution and liberty. And I've been tricked by this a few times as well. So never forget, never trust politicians. And whether states do the right thing or they don't, it's ultimately up to we the people to learn how to exercise our rights, whether the government wants us to or not.